Hope everyone's doing well. I'm ready to do the lead work on here. I'm just gonna show a small demonstration. Uh, I'm not a professional. I don't really know how to use this stuff that greatest, but I've learned on videos. And I had an old time friend told me back in the 70s how to fix a Landell top on one of my cars years ago to get rid of the vinyl top. And he showed me how to do it with lead. I was always interested in doing lead. It's a little pricey. It's a little hard to find the, part, uh, the, the lead rods because of, you know, it's toxic and, and uh, plastic filter pretty much replaced it. Uh, it's not really necessary to use it, but seeing that this is an old Porsche and they use it a lot, I like to kind of keep it authentic as best I can uh, by using lead where the seams are and uh, where areas that you need build up. I, I would like to do that because that's what they did in the factory and that's what I think would be a, a nice you know thing to do to it uh, you could use uh, plastic fillers a lot of good fillers out there that work wonderfully there's a there's a uh, item called all metal it's like almost a, a liquid bondo kind of metal it has it's like aluminum base uh, works really good it's really strong uh, that would probably what i would use if i did use lead but I wanted to do lead and I want to show you how to do it. Uh, I use this stuff to stay clean. Uh, I brush it on with a brush and then I heat it up and then I tin it with a, a piece of uh, the solder that uh, I'm using. And then I wipe it down with a, a rag. So I'll show you this and we'll try to speed up the video so it's not so boring for you. And we'll go from there. First of all, I get the stuff I pour in a little plastic container. A chip brush works okay. So I go over the whole thing with it. And you kind of want to reach further than you're actually going to do the, the lead because you need to have it stick. If it don't stick, you know, it'll come off. And then a year later from now, uh, you'll have bubbles from the paint and then you're going to be all mad at yourself because you didn't uh, tin it far enough. So now I got that uh, wiped down. So the next step, I'll have a nice clean rag. And I have a mini torch right here that I hooked up to a propane bottle. Uh, you can buy these anywhere. And then the propane bottle is, is you know good because it's a nice long bottle, like the barbecue uh, type that you buy, eight gallon or five gallon ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this up, heat this up, not too hot. You're gonna start seeing a little bit of color on this very little so then you're going to be ready to tin it make sure it's well ventilated in here because it's dangerous the fumes are very toxic so what i'm going to do is get the, it's a little hot and i'm going to start see how it's starting to rub i don't know if you can see it in the, in the video but i'm going to uh when it's not sticking you can see it. it's still sticking a little bit it takes time to perfect this to get to know how to use it. You kind of have to kind of work at it. You don't want to get too hot because then it'll just slide right off the key. So I got you know quite a bit on in here. See how it's running off if you're not careful. And now I got. it up a little bit more, get this kind of wet, and now you kind of see how it's tinning, it's getting a little shinier, I'm going to get it hot enough here, it's doing good there, but on the bottom it's not, so let's keep going, let me apply more of this stuff. I'm just gonna burn the brush a little bit. That's why you need a ventilator. See how that smoke's coming up? Very toxic. I'll heat this up a little bit more. It's a little too liquidy.
gotta make sure this metal is dead clean. If it's not, you're gonna have like, uh, see how those brown spots are right here? You're gonna have to clean that up a little bit. there so I'm gonna get this from where it is. What I like about this product it kind of kind of even if it's a little dirty it kind of it's a little bit more forgiving than the other stuff that I've seen out there. I'm not the best at doing this, but I'm learning. So let's learn together. If you know how to apply this really well, leave me a comment. I would love to hear your advice. So at the end of the video, I'll possibly show you how to uh, save the lid that you wasted, the one that falls on the floor, uh, so you can reuse it. Uh, especially when you're not good at it, you, you tend to drop a lot of it on the floor, and then it's, it's wasted, you know? And uh, I just figured a way out to reuse the original lid that's on the car. I've seen people use steel wool too. It seems to push it in there better. Sometimes this stuff burns. Let me see, I got a piece here. It's a little messed up, but let me show you. It works pretty good with the copper stuff. It's a little bit dirty, so I gotta kinda, that's why I say you gotta have it dead clean. If it's not, you're gonna, it's not gonna stick, it's not gonna thin. And then you won't be able to apply the lead. I'm learning just like anyone else did. I look at videos, I talk to people. There's not too many people that do this work anymore. A lot of the videos are really old. And um, kind of hard to see how they do it. Because they don't explain much about it. They just do it. Let me get a cleaner rag. product off. I think if you use too much heat on it, it, uh, it makes it go away. So a little crud there, probably from the, the rag burning on there. I'm trying not to put the rag on when it's too hot. getting tan, but it takes a little time. I'm not good at it. As good as some of these guys I've seen online. Gene Winfield seems like he does a really good job on that Eastwood site. Uh, but they try to sell all their product and I think you could do it without all that product. It's a little bit harder, but I think you could do it without having spend hundreds of dollars just to get that kit. 
uh, I used a, uh, I had a, I worked in the construction field and there was a, a job I was doing and um, they were throwing away all these thick door jams and they were made out of alder and I said, well, I'll use it one day. So uh, the guy threw in the back of my truck and um, I said, I'll use it one day. That was like 10, 15 years ago, something like that. And now, I, now I'm using it for the paddles. I made the paddles out of it. You see how it's tinning pretty decent now? Getting kind of the hang of it now. You see, it's a little dirty. You got to get rid of that. You got to want it shiny. Be careful not to burn yourself. I almost burned myself. I felt the heat. Didn't get me there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to repair the, the door a little bit right here also. But I'm just going to demonstrate just in this little scene first. But I'm going to marry into the this lid I already worked on. Too. It's nice to have a little wire brush to get rid of that uh, black stuff that I burnt from the the t-shirt material or the towel. And I just put it on there and it'll come right off. You just want to get the stuff on there so you can um, Your lead load, I guess they call it lead loading. So I'm gonna go probably to here just to show you the process, not to really get too much into it, which I am already. Let's get this underway. You kind of heat the bar up and the metal at the same time. Kind of a little trick to it. Not super hard once you get the hang of it, which I haven't yet fully, but. When I was growing up, I always wanted old cars, and I loved old cars. Not only because I love them, because I couldn't afford a new car. We weren't well to do. Still not, but. I think we're blessed. Even though we don't have the money like some people do, but. Left by God, you know. So, all right, we've got pretty much this all thinned out. I'm just gonna kind of clean this up a little naughty here. into this one because I got to do some more work on the uh, door. I already explained that. Sorry if I repeat myself. Be patient with me. I'm new at YouTube. I'm new at filming stuff. So my quality of my videos aren't going to be that great. I just wanted to make my the quality of the content uh, at least re uh, at least to work so you can do it yourself. Try not to make boring videos. I mean, there's plenty of them out there, so I hope this doesn't bore you. So 
I'm going like about four inches, you know, three or four inches past the actual work I'm going to apply. Just because you want this stuff to stick. Pretty decent now. It's uh, it's thin, thin or whatever you call it. I'm gonna try to get the camera to show better. Hopefully, in editing, we could make it look more noticeable. But now I'm gonna rub it with my wire brush. It's good to have a bigger one, but I'm just I'm just using what I have. Stainless steel or at least a brand new steel one would be the way to go. And I'm just gonna clean this now. I. Uh, have a bucket and I have I put quite a bit of a cup of baking soda in there and water and I, what I'm going to do is uh, remove the acid from this because it's you know very uh, it creates rust almost immediately on the car uh, when I first started doing the uh, lead work a couple weeks ago the car was really nice and shiny you know, from sanding it down and getting it ready and all that. And uh, I did a little uh, panel on my uh, the other quarter panel. And then the next morning I came in, the whole car was rusted out. I mean, it looked like the day that I bought it. I mean, I mean, it was just lightly surfaced, but enough to scare the daylights out of me because I saw it. I said, so what I used what I use to unrust it or get rid of the rust is a, it's a called concrete and metal prep. You could buy that at Home Depot. It's around twenty dollars, and what it does, it um, it's a phosphic acid, I believe. And what it does, it, it converts the rust and and, uh, and it gets rid of the rust. It helps to paint the car and stuff, or uh, metal or whatever that you have. So it's a good thing to have on your on your workbench when you're working in a car, especially when it's bare metal, you uh, rust, man, comes out of nowhere. So, so now I'm gonna wipe it down and just kind of get it, kind of dry it off. So there you have it, it's tin. So now the next move I'm gonna do is lead load it. We're gonna apply lead from here to here, all the way across, and maybe a little bit right here where it transitions, uh, and, and fix this little area where the factory over leaded it, and I had to pick the fender up so it could uh, match the the door. Uh, I was gonna leave it the same height that it was from the factory, but uh, the amount of lead they used in it was it was quite a bit, so. I didn't think it was necessary, so when I made this fender, I you know, picked it up just ever so slight, just an eighth of an inch, just so I could not have to use so much lead on it. I don't know what I did with my brush. I must have put it down somewhere, but uh, let me see. Hang on for a second. I have another one here. A little bit more aggressive lead. Compare it to like when you're soldering copper pipe. And you wonder why you have a leak in your solder in your uh, copper pipe is because your uh, your solder's dirty. You get a little little rock or a little um, just dirt, and it'll um, the solder won't stick. So also what I do is. I have, I use Crisco, believe it or not, as you could use Talon, that's the proper way of using it. People use wax, candle wax. But for some reason, uh, someone said Crisco. And I, I think it was the guy who showed me a long time ago and he used Crisco. And you know, when you're done with it, you can lick the spoon. Oh, don't do that, but I'm just kidding. But 
but uh, I stole it from my wife's kitchen, and and I, I didn't want to go buy Talon because Talon's not cheap, and you, you're gonna use it just for this, and you know it's just gonna sit and not do anything. So what you do is uh, I wipe this on the the spoon's a little messed up, but I put it on there and then I wipe it down with a rag, so just enough, and then I heat it with a torch. It's good to sand these down first, but uh, as for demonstration, I just decided to uh, show you kind of a sloppy way, but I tell you, when you do lead, it's gotta be clean. It's gotta be right. If not, you're gonna do it over and over until you, you get so frustrated. See, like this, this paddle, look how dirty this paddle is. Easily to be clean. There's my brush. I think I got water on my torch, it probably won't light now. So it does. So you could, you know, burn it off. It comes right off. And then uh, you sand it down. And I use, some people say use 400. I just use, um, this is 180. And uh, it's got to be flat when you do it. But just showing you as an example. I think this is, oh, this is 150. Uh, create a little bit of lines in the paddle, but it's sure more aggressive than using 400. It takes forever to sand 400 down on uh, the paddles. And you can tell I burned them a little bit. If you look at my other video, I, I made a bunch of paddles because this is made out of alder, it's not maple. I don't think it's as strong as maple. And it probably burns easier than maple, but so I made quite a few pan, uh, pads just in case I burn them. Like I say, I'm learning like you are all right now we're kind of ready so I am getting one of my sticks ready I crystalled my my pad I wipe the excess off of it put some on the side so it doesn't stick here we go and then I load some lead I'm gonna put the paddle right here so I don't drop it don't laugh, this is what I'm trying to achieve too. So I'm gonna start off on the back. You start anywhere you want, but too dry. Gotta get it on there. What I do is you put it on there and you can twist. Like you're screwing it in place. It seems to come off better off the rag coming off the thing. Don't get the metal too hot, or it'll just like you see it's turning blue. And it's getting too puddly, too uh, wet. It'll fall right off the car. And look what I'm doing not hot enough here. So it's like the three little bears in on Goldilocks. Uh, this bed's too hot, this bed's too uh, soft, this bed's just right. It's the same thing with lead. You have to know exactly when the heat's just right. But it's just like practice. You should just practice on an old piece of metal. And then you can re remelt the lead so you can reuse it. See how I got too much right there? Just moving it along. A little bit more here. And I'll run out if I don't do it here. Okay. See, there's a factory lead right there. It's starting to melt off when it's too hot. You could drip it on that place. I mean, the base metal, if it's too hot, it'll just melt. See, like it's coming right here. You gotta kind of know how to work your torch. I'm still learning.
kind of fun to do this. It's just an old work, uh, an old craft that it's 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 a forgotten craft. Um, it's forgotten because technology took over with uh, more modern plastics. And you know, the plastics work great as long as the metal panel is welded correctly and and you don't use too much of the, the metal uh, the plastic filler. So I mean it's I'm just doing it because Porsche did it and and I wanted to learn I wanted to do it. So I mean I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna paddle it a little bit because it's might be getting out of control. So it, as you see, it's like putting frosting on a cake. If you don't know how to put frosting on a cake, uh, we're in trouble, huh? And it just got kind of hot and it, it, it dried up. Here. Cold right here. This is the part's gonna be hard to marry in because this is where the factory left off, and I don't want to melt too much of the factory stuff on. into place. I made a round panel on the uh, hang on for a second I'll be right back. I made a rounded paddle that's rounded at the edges if you look at it and what it is it's good to do that part of it so let me uh, saturate it with the uh, Crisco I have another one I don't know what it did when it's front oh I see it's on the floor so um, we'll leave that there for now. We'll just do this new one and uh, wipe it off. So now I gotta reheat this uh, to that heat again. It's okay. What I like about lead is just heat it up and keep going. The bondo, <laughs> it dries up. Then you gotta grind it off or Prices on lead is quite expensive to buy this stuff. They want like $17 a stick, you know, from like Eastwood or one of those other places, and they charge you 15 bucks a ship. So one stick of lead is like $30, and look how fast this stick is going. So, best to save your lead, make a little contraption that you could uh, uh, melt it. If you saw my other video, it shows that little ladle I made. And what it does, it's uh, just melt it in the little ladle and I pour it in a little little vat. And you come out like this, like a little uh, pyramid shape. I'm just going to drip it on there because the metal is getting too hot.
say you probably, if you're a guy that does lead and look at, you're looking at my video, you're probably laughing at me. But that's okay. Like I said, we're learning. If you didn't learn today something, you didn't learn nothing at all. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do stuff that no one else does. I think uh, white is the road, you know. And I always pick the narrow road. Sometimes you feel like you're alone, but. It's okay. The good Lord's with me all the time, I know that. I wish I had my other paddle. My other paddle a little smaller. Got a little burn there. Tweaking the metal out, it is. But metal seems to go back in place as it as it cools off. And with lead, you could bump it, you know, after it's all done. So you know, with bondo, you can't bump. Uh, you can't um, bump it with a pick or a, a hammer or a dolly because the bondo will crack. Or you know the uh, plastic still. I hate saying bongo. I'm sorry. As I said earlier, make sure you're well, well ventilated because the fumes are quite toxic. to this piece here. It looks like a lot of lead, but not really. Most of it's gonna land on the floor. That's why I wanna show you a video how to retrieve it and reuse it. Hopefully we can combine it in this video. We'll see how the editing goes with my wife and me and I. We just have a you know, we're a bit we're a bit older. We're pushing 60. Uh, never really had a hankering for computers and stuff. Kind of like the last of the old school people. And, Baby Boomer, or whatever he calls us. Or Knucklehead, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. So Jane, Jane Winfield, I guess that's the custom uh, custom car guy. He got a really good video showing how to do it, showing how dead clean you have to be. But you're going to be using um, the product that he's trying to sell, which everyone has to make money. So 
I, I'm not knocking the product that, you, that he's using, but if there's alternatives. So now I have this pretty straight. So it's gonna be filing next. Okay, again, uh, this is the shavings and all the stuff that uh, I shaved off and picked up as um, I was basically load letting. Some of it fell on the floor, so I sweeped it up. I'm going to burn this and I'm going to clean it up so we can actually use it, reuse it. So this is all you got to do. I made a little ladle for my other video I showed you. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to heat this, basically burn all the impurities out of it. I start from the top, make sure you have ventilation. This stuff is toxic. So there's a lot of dirt, as you see in there. As this melts down, I'm gonna stick my torch towards the bottom so it can heat up. As heat rises, that's the best way, but I wanted to kind of, it starts it off pretty good this way. This is not a, a proper smelting device, but it's working for me. I was gonna buy one online, they're not that expensive. They're like $50 to $100, you know, for people to make bullets and all that stuff. But I didn't seem to need that tool. And it's just another tool just to sit around. I don't do this enough to justify buying that thing, even if it's even if it's cheap. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of, you can see it's very dirty. Stir it up a little bit. And when you stir it, you know, the, the, the junk comes up on top. Like they say, this is not the 100% accurate way of doing it. I just use whatever I had around the shop to make this real quick. I didn't know if I could make bars and I didn't know how to make mold. And I don't know where I saw it, but uh, I don't know if it was a video or what. I basically, as I heat, I got two pieces of angle and I, you know, stood them up and then I just weld the ends and they just stay straight up and then I just pour it in there. I'll show you. Hopefully, if you get it in the video good enough, we walk this out of here. Try to set this up so you can see it better. I got most of the slag out. It's usually quicker than this. I'm just trying to show you guys. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'll be careful not to burn myself. You should wear safety glasses. So I'm going to pour it in that plate. It must have been a little water there or something. A little slag in there. It's clean enough to use. What I do is sometimes I go over it so it looks cleaner. You don't have to. Just make it so it's more even. And sometimes it burns some of the impurities out too. And there you have it. Homemade bars. 
like to show you more about how to do the lead work. Maybe I'll do another video. But this is pretty much basic, how to do it and then how to retrieve some of it back. Uh, I'd like to thank you for taking the time and watching me uh, doing this. Like I say, there's not really many videos out there showing how to do this. And, and my Porsche, I really wanted to, you know, go over a little bit higher standards when it comes to doing the body work. Seeing that this car was a total wreck and it was pretty much a parts car, not even worth fixing, even to a restoration shop. So um, I just wanted to give you guys an idea how to restore something on a, on a, on a shoestring budget. Uh, I'm going to show you the bars right now. I think they're cool enough to flip over. And they might break, but they don't stay stuck to the floor. See? This one broke because it wasn't ready to pull out yet. But you see this? I don't even touch this. It's too hot right now. But this is it. This is the bars I made, recycled. A great thing to, to, to learn, uh, instead of buying a bunch of lead bars, you could at least buy what you need, you know, maybe a couple pounds, maybe three pounds of this stuff, and then you could make your own bars when you run short. Also use the 50-50 uh, solder that they use for roofing material. That works, it's a little tougher to, 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 um, to grade, it's a little harder to flow out when you do it but the price of this lead is, is is so expensive and it's so hard to get I go on eBay and I what I do is uh, I try to find 70 30 I believe it's 70 percent lead 30 percent tin but uh, sometimes I get lucky find it at a pretty decent price it's uh, Dutch boy usually was the manufacturer of the stuff back in the 50s and 40s uh, sometimes you'll find an old uh, find and uh, that's how I got some of this stuff. Uh, but if you find 50-50, you could use it. You could get pure lead, mix a little bit with the 50-50, so you could change the ratio. But I don't recommend it because it's a lot of trial and error. And it is, if you don't have the ratio correct, it doesn't stick properly, it doesn't spread properly. But I'm a type of guy that wants to experiment. So um, I appreciate your, your time and your video and uh, watching my video. And uh, thank you very much. Hopefully you see me in the next one. God bless.